Why Sheikh Hamdan's mother left him, or why that did not happen? This is what we'll be discussing in this video. Now we all know Rashid al Maktoum. We know that despite having access to endless luxury and leading a grand lifestyle, every single wife of Sheikh Rashid al Maktoum they have left him except Hind al Maktoum. Now, why is that? How is that even possible? Well, that's what we want to discuss more in details, guys, more in details. So, the ruler of Dubai fled. I mean, all of them. The wives of ruler of Dubai, they fled except Hind al Maktoum. And this is a story of true love. What do you think? Is this a story of true love? Or is this a story of severe perseverance? Like she wanted to stay here, she didn't want to leave him. What do you think about this story? Let me know. This story of the one who stayed Prince Hamdan's mother. And we will start from the very beginning. So Hind al Mahdum. She was born on the 12th of February 1962 to the royal house of al Mahdum. This royal house, they are very, very rich. If you do not know about them, they are absolutely ridiculous rich people, this whole family. And so they love doing what they're doing, which is, you know, living their life and, you know, just going about their day. So her father was the son of Sheikh Juma bin al Maktoum, who was the brother of her husband's grandfather. Her mother was also from the Maktoum house. She was the daughter of her husband's grandfather. So as you can see this lady, Randa, I will talk about her in a second but she was the daughter of her husband's grandfather, Amir Dubai. So she was royalty through and through. Growing up, she was raised with strict Islamic principles, meaning she was schooled indoors. The one you're seeing on the picture on the video is not actually Hamdan's mother. She is the nanny. But let's talk about more about this nanny and all that. Who she is, she was one of Rashid al Maktoum's wives. Some people say, no, no, she was not actually a wife. She was a mistress and all that, but this wife, Hind al Maktoum, she is a royal herself. She is a royal herself, and so when she got married into the royal family, she knew everything how to follow. So, for example, Islamic laws and all that. She was aware of all of it. So she did not have any problem. She lived pretty much an indoor life, and she was happy for that. So she left the palace. If Hind longed for more, we can't really tell, because she took to the training and did as she was told. So basically what this is suggestive is that she was trained well by her family, by her parents, to live a royal life in privacy and all that. When she turned 17, her good nature paid off. Sheikh Mohammed had just recently been promoted to play a higher role in the ruling of Dubai and his family, indeed. Sorry, his family needed him to be more grounded in his ways and settled down. It also did not help that he had gotten the child out of wedlock. With the Lebanese wife woman, as I said, Randa, so Randa is from Lebanon, they needed him to get married to someone who respected, preferably royalty. And that was when Hind came into the picture. Guys, as I said, Hind al Maktoum was a very, very important part of his life. She brought in all kind of discipline, if you like, in his life. She brought in Islamic values, principles, that Hamdan's father, Rashid al Maktoum, would not have been able to achieve by marrying or having a mistress like Aranda al Banna. So she actually did a very good job in keeping Rashid al Maktoum out of trouble. Now, Hind had always known Sheikh Mohammed since the beginning of the 20th century. She was his maternal cousin and paternal second cousin, although it was not unusual for cousins to get married in the Arabian culture. The significant age gap between them might have made, you know, we talk about, you know, the, you know, marrying your relative, your cousin, and we sometimes frown on it. But the matter of the fact is that guys in the Arab culture, this is something very, very common. Even with the age gap thing, that is something also very, very common. I mean, nobody really cares how old are you, as long as you are able to communicate like a matured woman, like a matured man, and all those kind of things, you are good to go. So this is exactly what is happening right now with the family, because again, they have no problem, no qualm about that. Now, Randa Albana, even though she was not equal in age with Rashid al Maktoum, between them might have been made it harder for her to imagine that she would be the chosen one. So when she was informed of Sheikh's intentions and agreed preparations began for the celebration of a lifetime, wedding was grander than you could ever imagine. And it was the first major, it was the first major public event for Dubai. The United Arab Emirates had recently gained independence from a British, you know, and was in control of the revenue being generated. You know the money that you see on the screen. 
be generated from their oil wealth. So Dubai had more than enough money to splurge on the celebration. In other words, because Dubai had so much money, they didn't have any problem to spend all of this, or a lot of this money, I should say, for the wedding of Sheikh Rashid Al Maktoum. So this ordeal lasted for about five days. So the wedding was for five days in total, Rashid Al Maktoum and Hind Al Maktoum. 20,000 city stadiums were built, and you know seat was also a big enough to fit dignitaries, while the less reputable people were hosted in open spaces that had been decorated on the streets of Dubai. In other words, guys, this individual, this lady, Sheikh Hind al Makhdoum, the mother of Sheikh Hamdan Fazar's mother, is someone who deserves to be praised because of how loyal she had been to Rashid al Makhdoum. I mean, even though we know some of his wives fled, Princess Hamdan Hussein, for example, but she is stuck, she loves where she is, and she wants to keep it that way, not trying to change anything, not trying to rock the boat for anybody. So yeah, this is such a great achievement for Hamdan al Maktoum. I'll be talking more about it in part two. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Leave a comment if you have any, and I will see you in the next video. And you have a wonderful day yourself. Take care. Her relationship with Sheikh Hamdan Faza is not working, even though she said, we, me and Faza, Sheikh Hamdan. She said, me and Faza, we have been in contact. We are in a relationship for so many months and years. But nevertheless, right now, she is at a point where she doesn't know why it all started. By the way, this is something that was sent to me with evidence, with proofs. She not only said it, she not only emailed me, but she also sent me proofs showing me, telling me, that this is real. As I said in my past videos, we do not know if you are talking to the real Faza Sheikh Hamdan or not. We do not know. This is something I will never claim. He can't come out and talk to you. This person, this lady, she wrote to me and she said, I'm talking to the real Faza. We are in a relationship. We know each other for so long. We did this, we did that. But now she doesn't even know why that even started. Why? Why did Sheikh Hamdan Faza do what he did? Before I mention this whole story and show you the proof, I want to tell you this. If you are someone who has a story, if you have been in contact with Sheikh Hamdan Faza, whoever it is, Email me, let me know so that I can share your story. I do not reveal your personal details, but if you ask me to do so, I will do it. But write to me, email me, let me know your story so that we can share it, because when we do that, a lot of people benefit. This story is very, very interesting. As I said, the lady here presented proofs. You cannot ignore these facts. You cannot brush them off over and over again. So what is the story? What is it that I want to share with you? But before I do that, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel because we talk about Sheikh Hamdan Faza on this channel. In fact, most of the time we talk only about him, his lifestyle, what he is up to and whatnot. So again, if you're new here, consider subscribing. The story goes something like this. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. She said, and she wrote my name at the beginning of this email. She said, listen, I have been dealing with this for a long time. She starts off the email by mentioning, she has been dealing with this for a long time. I have never asked Prince Hamdan for a thing. She never asked for a present, any gift. He never asked me for anything. And Sheikh Hamdan Faza did not ask her, for example, to buy a royal card or a royal membership. That did not happen. She did not ask for anything. Sheikh Hamdan Faza did not ask anything from her either. So what was the problem? The problem is, she said, I still, I haven't gotten back. They did not get back to me, meaning Sheikh Hamdan Faza and his family, on what the next move is. Are they going to propose to me? Are they going to take it to a new level, the next level? Which might mean getting married, which might mean at least coming close to the royal Dubai royal family, finding out who they are, bringing this lady, this woman, this lover, closer to the relationship, to the family, she said, I do not know what will be the next move because I had opened a business account. Now, this is where things get very interesting. She was asked by Sheikh Hamdan Faza and his team to open a business account. And this is what makes her really upset. And this is what she said exactly. These are her words. She said, why would Sheikh Hamdan Faza ask me to open a business account? And then all of a sudden, Sheikh Hamdan Faza did not talk to her. She said, quote, as I said, there were two other men involved. I believe we'll call him Rob, who's in Hawaii, 
and his boss, this lying Tony Stark, don't know where. But this thing started to get weird. Tony Stark and another man, they contacted her. There are two men, one from Hawaii and the other one Tony Stark. Both seem to be from the States, both from Hawaii. Am I saying right? Hawaii, Hawaii. So the people working for Sheikh Hamdan Faza, who are working for Sheikh Hamdan Faza, according to her, they are getting in contact with her because they want this person to open a bank account now. Doesn't mean they will ask her for money. That did not happen. It's very, very important for us to understand here. She said the reason she is confused is that why Sheikh Hamdan Faza, his team, would ask me to open a business account and then I do not know what is next. This is what she said. She said, I was asked to keep all conversations via email or phone documented, which I did. I have a folder five inches thick, if not more. Actually, I have three folders that I printed off the conversations. In other words, she has proof that she did talk to Sheikh Hamdan Fadza. I'll show you this picture as proof that she sent me where she said basically that this is the conversation, this is how money was transferred and whatnot. This was sent to her, as you can see, Prince Hamdan replied. This is not her real name, though. This is a pseudonym. She said the email basically thanks to Allah for having you here again. I lost you on Hangout Chat. Hope you received the money from the Everbank of America. I want to mention a very important thing here. Okay, when this person is saying that he sent him money through Everbank in America, I want to tell you this. Hangout is not something Sheikh Hamdan Faza uses. Number one point, if you are talking to Sheikh Hamdan Faza on Hangout, most likely you will not talk to the right one again. I will not say anything. It is up to you. It can be Sheikh Hamdan Faza real. But normally, people will come and tell you Sheikh Hamdan Faza is not on Hangout. Number two, Everbank. Money sending through that bank. It happens all the time. People like yourself, if you're listening, they get an email from Sheikh Hamdan Faza and they claim that they have sent money. Sheikh Hamdan Faza sent money to Everbank of America. This happens all the time, so you need to be careful about that. Now things get very, very interesting when this whole team of Sheikh Hamdan Faza got involved in this, and they are looking very serious about this business deal. Because she opened a business account, she has a collection of all the texts and emails, she put them in a folder as evidence, and she documented everything. This is exactly what we all should do. Every time you talk to someone, document it. And she said, quote, Well, I noticed the other day that one of the dudes claimed his name. Check this out. Tony Stark. Tony Stark. Well, as if I was that slow, which I was, the name is associated with the superhero movie. Now, the problems that Sheikh Hamdan Faza and his team have with this particular lady are because they are accusing her of being very, very slow in dealing with them. They are saying you are not fast enough. You are not taking a step. You are not making it happen because they wanted to have a relationship with Sheikh Hamdan Faza and this lady. At the same time, they wanted Sheikh Hamdan Faza to have a business relationship. So business relationship and personal relationship, that's what they were aiming for. But none of them are panning out the way they thought it would. And she is getting upset because now they're saying you are slow. This whole fiasco is happening because you are slow. You need to pick up the pace. Then she said something very, very interesting, that the name Tony Stark is a name from superhero movies. I don't watch movies. I do not know. She checked the name. She checked the name. And this is what you should do. Then she said, now very interesting. She said, this name is the man's name that was the businessman in Hawaii. Well, he also has a loan company. A loan company and knew a lot about law, as I am not that slow. But hey, once again... It brings me back to becoming upset. She said, I'm not going to use the exact word. They paid for a business license, not a DBA LLC. So it looks like she received payment. This is very, very interesting because normally you do not see Sheikh Hamdan Faza paying someone. It is the other way around. It is the lover, people who want to be in a relationship. They are getting paid. It is not Sheikh Hamdan who pays them. It is the people that are getting paid. So this is very interesting because it looks like she said that they paid for a business license. Why would they pay for a business license if they are not genuine, if they are not sincere? Then she said, quote, For me, and it's registered in Minnesota, this whole thing has me so messed up in the head that it's not making any sense. 
They did not steal anything from me. They did some very upsetting things. I'm not going to use the word, but nothing to where I have to worry about my credit or anything else. So, okay, this is a very important thing, and very, very, I mean, this thing is something you all want to remember. Every time you deal with anyone, Sheikh Hamdan Fazla, online, you must make sure that your credit is not affected. And at the same time, you must make sure you do not take money from them. This lady, she did not, looks like she did not take any money from Sheikh Hamdan Fazza, and Sheikh Hamdan Fazza, on the other hand, did not receive any money from her, nor did he ask her to pay anything. When you are in contact with Sheikh Hamdan Fazza, normally money will come. Every time you contact Sheikh Hamdan, there will be a conversation about money. Buying your oil membership card or paying for his trip so that he can come to you or paying him for the helicopter that he will send you, to bring you to the palace, things like that. So there is always this element where you see money is involved, always. In this case, it is exactly the same. Money is involved. In fact, money is the main reason why this whole thing started. And then obviously you also have the relationship side of it, of the conversation. What we understand from these kinds of messages is very, very simple. You are in a relationship with Sheikh Hamdan Faza. If you can prove it, I'm not saying again, I will not claim anything. If you can prove it and you have evidence, you have proof, that's good for you. You can go ahead and have a relationship with Sheikh Hamdan Faza. Looking at the story of Sheikh Hamdan Faza, what he is doing right now, we can say with conviction that Sheikh Hamdan Faza is not looking for a marriage at the moment. Would he have a relationship outside the marriage? Unlikely, but can happen. Does he have a concubine or any other woman in his life? Possible, we do not know. This is not something we claim when we talk about his relationship in this channel. Look, he is having an affair. In fact, I mentioned it yesterday in my video that a lot of people are claiming he has a relationship with Hollywood celebrities. And I said, no, that is not true. Emma Watson, Paris Hilton, you name it, Lindsay Lohan. These are all made up stories. Nevertheless, we will never say that he does not want to marry any other woman or he thought that he is not interested. In fact, it can be quite the opposite, but again, we do not know. It might happen. So, if you are talking to Sheikh Hamdan Faza, going back to the story of this person, we see a lot of things good about this interaction, but there are a lot of things not panning out the way it should. Good things are that. She's opening a business account. She is someone who is finding now a new way of looking at herself, especially when it comes to opening a business. She might be inspired now, she might be motivated now. Maybe she never thought about opening a business in the past. Now that somebody is contacting her, she has a business account, there is a possibility. We do not know that she might go into some kind of business. The bad thing is that this conversation that she is having with these people in Hawaii from the States is not going anywhere. Again, if you have a story you want to share with me, feel free to write to my email address, royals101 at yahoo.com. I believe that's the address. I have a few comments here. Annaline Francisco. Good evening. Thank you, Annaline. I do not know where you're from, Annaline. If you can let me know, that'll be great. You are from UK, Philippine, US, Canada. Kelly. Well, if she's speaking with him and he asked for that, it's very strange. I would worry about that. They could put her in debt. A possible. If you are, I mean, the good thing about this, Kelly, is that she's not involved in any kind of transaction. Yes, she has a business account, but she's not sending money to him, nor is she asking them to send her money, for which she could be in debt. But that's a good point. Heike, hello from Germany. That's true. Heike, thank you again for joining in. I'm 18 years old. Away. I do not know why you are talking about that. Sheikh Hamdan is waiting for the most beautiful, okay, Kelly. I have a serious question. Why does not the... He put stuff to all of these people, saying they are him and using people. He would probably... The first reason is he probably doesn't even know. He doesn't have time for YouTube. He doesn't have time like you and me. Have coming and talking about it. And at the same time, maybe nobody told him yet. So when we make this video and we talk to you guys about these things... Hopefully one day he will see these videos and see like, oh, these guys talking about this thing, so I need to do something about it. The other thing also, he is just, maybe he's aware, but he doesn't bother because there are maybe thousands of them. 
so how many he can deal with if he puts out one video, then he cannot just say, oh, just one video, and I'm done because people will, he might, people might even get more confused. If he talks about this once, he has to come on this, you know, in this kind of video, or if he's making any kind of videos addressing this issue, he has to do it over and over again, but I don't think he's, he'll be interested or he has the time. This is what happened. I was at home. It was in the afternoon and I was just checking my phone, playing with it. Suddenly, while I was checking for some news and browsing comments, an email caught my attention. It became very interesting. The email I received seemed quite important, though initially it didn't strike me as such. However, more emails kept coming in, one after another, and I couldn't ignore it. As I continued checking my phone and emails, the first message I received was from someone asking how I was. I replied, I'm good, how are you? Then another email arrived asking, are you Adio Saeed's vlog? She was confirming my identity, to which I confirmed. She then asked if I had any questions or needed anything. Then things took an interesting turn. This person asked me, how can I trust you? I was taken aback. Why do you need to trust me? I asked. I don't even know you. She insisted that it was very important because if I didn't understand its importance, she wouldn't talk to me. Things got more intriguing. Then she revealed who she was. You won't believe what she said, but before I tell you, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to this channel. We produce numerous videos about Shah Kamdan Faza and discuss topics like the Dubai royal family, including Princess Latifa and Shah Kashamsa. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. The email emphasized that I first had to trust her and that everything she would say was true. She verified herself, which was crucial. It wasn't just some random person claiming things. She provided proof of who she was. She insisted that I needed to trust her, but she'd provide evidence to verify her claims. I found myself a bit overwhelmed. How could I convince her to trust me? However, she proceeded to share something significant and fascinating. She said, If I can trust you, then this is my account. This wasn't just any account. It was a royal family account. She stressed the importance of verifying her identity. She provided her name, password, and other details, urging me to confirm. She claimed to be the wife of Shah Kamdan Faza. Now I know Shah Kamdan Faza, and from another source I've heard that his wife, Shaka Saida Thani, follows my YouTube channel. That's what's been said, although I can't verify it. But this person claimed to be Shah Kamdan Faza's wife, contradicting the news about his twins. According to her, he's not the father of the twins. She is his wife. She urged me to check a video chat she had with him. She even provided her account details, which made me skeptical. Who would give away their password and account information like that? Yet, she insisted, claiming that this was her account, and I could verify her identity. She emphasized the importance of understanding this story for the future. Why am I telling you this story? It's not the first time I've encountered people claiming to be Shah Hamdan Faza's wives. There are several reasons. Firstly, when you admire someone's personality like Shah Hamdan Faza, it's essential to understand that there may be many who come forward with claims of intimacy or relationships. They might even claim to be the mothers of his children. In today's world, it's easy for people to make accusations and damage someone's reputation. You might find surprising and shocking revelations that turn you away from supporting or admiring Faza in the future. This isn't the only instance. Another person not claiming to be Shah Kamdan Faza's wife, but from his inner circle, might come forward with similar revelations. They might claim inside knowledge about Faza's personal life, such as his alleged multiple marriages. So the question arises, are these claims true? It's crucial to understand this because repeatedly denying such claims might become untenable. We've seen similar instances before, like Randa Albana claiming to be the wife of Shah Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum. Initially doubts arose, but eventually her claims were substantiated, revealing a previously unknown aspect of his personal life. So, is everything true, or is it all fabricated? What's happening? Could some of these claims hold truth? There's a possibility that Shah Hamdan Fazza might indeed marry multiple times in the future. However, I believe that if he does, he will be transparent about it. 
He won't marry in secret, we'll know who his wives are. So we shouldn't trust every claim that surfaces, even if many women come forward, professing to be his wives. These claims are highly dubious. Mary commented, Hello, Saeed, and Annie added, Hi, Annie. Thanks to both of you for tuning in. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We'll continue discussing Faza Shekham in our upcoming videos. Have a great weekend and take care. A beaming ruler-in-waiting stands between dozens of local leaders and guests rush to take selfies with him. The king moves around the room like an Instagram star who is used to hanging out with big names like Cristiano Ronaldo. A few meters behind him, in the background at an event at the Dubai Expo earlier this year, was a man who may not be as well known in the city's social scene, but whose influence is getting praise from foreign investors and keeping government-run company execs on their toes. My 39-year-old brother, Sheikh Maktoum, and 73-year-old father, who is the master of Dubai, are taking on more responsibility. Each of them has made a place for themselves. They have to protect Dubai's position as the most important business hub in the Middle East. Even though it faces competition from other cities in the area and scrutiny from around the world because of Russia's war in Ukraine, Nasser al Sheikh, who used to be Dubai's finance chief and helped the emirate get through the debt crisis in 2009, said, think of it as a company. Hamdan is the CEO and Maktoum is the chairman. Even though Hamdan is the crown prince and the face of Dubai, all decisions are made after the two brothers talk about them. Crown Prince and heir Sheikh Hamdan is the city's most famous salesman. The city was built on its flash and its ability to bring in money and millions of tourists. This year, Sheikh Maktoum has been very important to Dubai's financial market because he runs the Emirates' many large state-run businesses. He is part of a push to sell shares to investors, most recently to Salik, a company that runs toll roads. He has also called business leaders in the past to talk about their numbers. Dubai is also under pressure to stop the flow of illegal money. The energy crisis may have helped the United Arab Emirates make more money from oil, but it will speed up the world's move away from fossil fuels in the long run. The brothers, who were born a year apart but to the same mother, also have to keep the UAE's delicate power balance in check. That happened after the leaders of Dubai convinced Abu Dhabi to put more emphasis on business and the economy, and less on foreign policy, which caused the UAE to send troops to fight in wars in Yemen, Libya and Turkey. Saudi Arabia, on the other hand, is a problem because it wants to be like Dubai and attract foreign wealth and talent. The two men don't talk to the press very often. The Dubai media office said that talks could not be set up in the time allotted and would not say anything else. Faza is Sheikh Hamdan's nickname. In Arabic, it means someone who quickly helps others. In 2008, he was made crown prince instead of his older brother, Sheikh Rashid, who died in 2015 at the age of 33. Sheikh Hamdan's social media pages have a lot of formal pictures of him doing official things for the government, but they also have pictures of him skydiving, mountain climbing, horseback riding, and standing on top of the world's biggest building. He interacts with people in Dubai's shops and restaurants, continuing the image of the approachable leader his father built as he prepares for his future role. He has 14.6 million Instagram followers, which is more than the population of the UAE. Most of the time, Hamdan goes with his father to talks with other Sheikhdom leaders in the UAE. He also leads Dubai's 20 two-person executive council, which includes his brother. That Hamdan is characterized by his young and dynamic personality that has helped him connect with the people of Dubai is written on the council's website. He is also the head of the Investment Corporation of Dubai, which is the Emirates National Wealth Fund. What about Maktoum? The council says he has the traits of an ambitious young leader. After his uncle died in September 2021, he was named finance minister for the UAE. This put him in the public eye. Investors became interested in him when he led the the sale of shares in long-coveted, state-owned companies. They had been calling for years for state-run businesses to be listed on the stock market in Dubai in order to make it better. A senior researcher at the Dubai Public Policy Research Center, Behuth, who has also been a UAE ambassador, said, Sheikh Maktoum is currently playing the role that has been set out for him, which is clear and technical. Being the crown prince, Sheikh Hamdan has a more important job to do. People from the area and the different tribes like him, and he can also connect with and appeal to Dubai big expat community. It's going to be a busy year for public sales this year. Ten state-owned companies are going to offer shares to investors. More than $6 billion was raised when Sheikh Maktoum helped sell shares in Dubai Electricity and Water Authority, the city's main utility, and Techcom Group, 
which runs business parks. In September, investors bought up all of the shares that were available in Salik, a company that runs road tolls. Dubai then made the sale even bigger. The deal, which was put together by Goldman Sachs Group Inc., Merrill Lynch and other firms, is meant to bring in $1 billion. A manager at the Egyptian investment bank EFG Hermes named Mohammed Abu Basha said, Dubai's markets are not fully reflecting that status as the financial hub of the region. If you want to further boost the Dubai story, you need to continue this IPO push, which I think is long overdue. Sheikh Maktoum is also very interested in how businesses are run. He is in charge of the government's auditing department and keeps a close eye on the funds of Dubai's state-controlled businesses. Some of these businesses caused Dubai's financial problems more than 10 years ago. The goal makes sense, since he's one of the main people in charge of keeping an eye on the city's money. People who know about the situation say that since taking over as head of the Financial Audit Authority, the Royal has directed financial investigations into several state firms when they think there may be corruption. However, they did not want to be named because the discussions were private. They said that he keeps business meetings short, serious, and to the point, even though in this part of the world, people usually talk for a long time over tea before getting down to work. An official at a company owned by the UAE said he was shocked when Sheikh Maktoum's office called to ask him to come in. He was led into the office by someone, but then Sheikh Sheikh Maktoum walked in with a bottle of water in his hand a short time later. Right away, he started going over some deals and asking for more information and explanations. The executive got worried during the meeting and started reaching for his files, but the Sheikh put him at ease, according to the executive, who did not want to be named because it was a private meeting. He gave his direct phone number to someone else when he left. Sheikh Maktoum is the deputy prime minister and deputy ruler of Dubai. One banker said that Sheikh Maktoum often asks for details on certain projects late at night or on the weekends. The UAE stock markets have changed for the better since Sheikh Maktoum took over, said Tariq Fadlala, who is in charge of Nomura Asset Management's Middle East business. It definitely helps that he's the son of Dubai's ruler and that he's from a generation that's comfortable with rapid change. Sheikh Maktoum wants to make sure that Dubai doesn't go through another financial crisis like the one in 2009, when it needed a $20 billion loan from Abu Dhabi. Sheikh Maktoum was in his early 20s when Dubai was close to going bankrupt. He asked Al Sheikh, who was in charge of finances at the time, to give him a full report on the situation. He asked me to sit with him and run him through the numbers, Al Sheikh stated. He wanted to know where exactly the stress points were and what caused them. Dubai now has to deal with new problems. The UAE was put on the so-called Grey List by the Paris-based Financial Action Task Force earlier this year. This shows that the Gulf country isn't doing enough to stop the flow of illegal money. The UAE has said since then that it will make deportation agreements stronger. Since Russia in the way Dubai deals with illegal money has come under more inspection around the world. In terms of politics, the UAE has kept ties with Russia. In private, UAE leaders have said that the country will follow the rules set by the international community. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, a millennial and de facto leader of Saudi Arabia, is opening up the country. This is also starting to bring in foreign talent that might have gone to Dubai instead. In response, the UAE has worked to make the country more appealing to foreign businesses and to get newcomers to stay longer. It stopped being illegal for unmarried couples to live together, let expats marry, divorce, and use the inheritance laws of their home countries, and got rid of the rule that you needed a license to drink alcohol. Also, you no longer need local partners to start a business. Some people can now get long-term visas, and the UAE has started a rare move in the Gulf region. It is letting some people become citizens. How Dubai handles the next phase will depend on how the two brothers get along. Sheikh Hamdan will finally take over over from his father as the city's face, while Sheikh Maktoum will solidify his position as the numbers guy. Jim Cran, who wrote the 2009 book City of Gold, Dubai and the Dream of Capitalism, said that when Sheikh Maktoum was first appointed, there were pretty low expectations. I didn't know much about him, but he's becoming so well known because of how strong he is as a person and how willing he is to get involved.